Okay guys, as per the name of this video, 18th century KFC. <laughs> now, while I would like to envisage that the Colonel himself was around in the 1800s, I've seen a lot of mock KFC recipes lately and I've been going to give one of them a go, but then I saw this. And while, it, while it's not touted as being, you know, just like KFC, it is deep fried chicken and it's a recipe from 1736. Now, I actually got this recipe from another YouTube channel that I quite like following called The Townsends. So I'll put a link to them down below. They, they do a lot of um, 18th century cooking and that sort of thing. They dig out old recipe books. And I thought, oh, I've got to give this a go. It's from a book called Diction Dictionarium Domesticum by Nathan Bailey. It's actually mine and Clint's wedding anniversary today. This will be our anniversary dinner. 16 years. And I still fit the wedding dress, by the way. Don't ask me how I know that. Da, do, da. I still fit my wedding dress. Just go with it. First, we want to marinate the chicken. Now, I meant to put lemon juice in here, but that is interchangeable. I was planning on picking up lemons this morning and I forgot. You can also use vinegar. Um, malt vinegar would be the closest to what they used back in the day if you're, if you're sticking to you know authentic methods um, or cider vinegar so now the thing about the really really old cookbooks is they don't actually give you an amount so <laughs> so there's a bit of guesswork um, in the video that I watched they used the juice of two large lemons and then used an equal amount of malt vinegar now, as they say, cider vinegar also works well because I've, you know, I make my own apple cider vinegar. I'm going to use a bit of malt and a bit of apple cider vinegar. See how it goes. Black sediment in the bottle of the apple cider vinegar. That's that's a good sign. If you're buying cider vinegar from the supermarket, you go for the cloudy stuff. That's the good stuff. I've got a one eighth of a cup measure. I think that'll be about the juice of a lemon. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do one and eight. I'm going to put two of them, so I'm going to put a quarter of a cup of each in. So a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar, and I'm going to put a quarter of a cup of malt vinegar. I've just got the pan stuck here. The smell of that, I need about a teaspoon of ground cloves. teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of salt. This is the stuff I got from the ocean. <laughs> Refer to my uh, how to make kosher salt video. Oh and we need two bay leaves which means I have to go visit my chickens because our bay leaf tree is in with the chickens. Be right back. Right, Wendy out there, the chicken said to say hi. Two bay leaves. We also need spring onion or green onion, whatever you call it. So, chop that up really small. I'm always never quite sure how far up a spring onion to chop. I tend to do it until, you know, a couple of the leaves start getting in the way, it starts getting hollow in the middle. Can anyone tell me that? Can you actually use like the, the spangly parts on the end for anything? I'm assuming not, don't know. Alright. Get into the pot. Stirry, stirry, stirry. And chickeny pieces. Drop these in here. Give them a smush around. Now we want to marinate these for about three hours. Apparently, this isn't one of those things where you want to leave them overnight because because of the, uh, the vinegar, it can actually end up really, really strong. So it can take over if you leave it to marinade for too long. So, right, it's taking note of the time. So, just going to smush this all around. Turn to one side, just leave that to soak for about three hours. And then, show you the next stage. Alright, so that has been marinating for a few hours now. 
So, what to do now is we want to make the batter. So we need one and a half cups of flour. I'm gonna mix some wine in with this. But it is a cheap bottle. This clean skin stuff. If, any, if anyone likes like Corbin's sort of thing, but they don't sell Corbin's at my local pack and save anymore. I know I have very cheap taste when it comes to wine. But that, that clean skin, it's only six dollars something a bottle, but it's actually really nice. So I'm going to tip a bit of this in and just mix it in until it kind of has the consistency of pancake batter. these eggs you know. I went and bought them from the supermarket at the same time as I bought a big sack of chook pellets. Freeloaders at the moment. That special time of year when my chickens become freeloaders. Look at this big school boy that's just come up on the bench. He started school this week. How dare he start school. How dare you. <laughs> but I've been so productive. Mum? Yeah. What was that? It's not one of our chickens, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> one teaspoon of salt. Turn that in. Yeah. Right. Then, I'm going to have to start heating the oil up. God, I'll tell you what, oil is noisy when it's boiling. I did not realise how noisy that was. <laughs> Obviously, you use a lot of oil to do this. Um, I t this was this was probably about two thirds full, and you know that's how much oil I used. You can reuse this, but just bear in mind you can you can reuse it about three times, is what I've heard. Um, just bear in mind that when you're cooking something else with it, it may retain some of the flavours of the last thing you cooked. So if you're going to cook a batch of donuts, you probably don't want to do it with the oil that you've just deep fried some chicken in. <laughs> what I've done is I've left it out overnight just so that it has completely cooled down, left the lid on so, you know, no other little bitty bits, no flies decide to drown themselves in it overnight. Get my, um, my soup which doesn't have a handle in at the moment, but you know. Muslin cloth and I'm just going to strain this into an ice cream container and then I'll put it back into the bottle that it came in. I get my funnel and I'm going to put the muslin over here again just give it a bit of a second strain.
over. Can we go there? I'm going over. Yep, in a minute. That's pretty good. I mean, it's not as flavourful as KFC, you know, it hasn't like got... I mean, obviously it didn't have any sort of herbs and spices and stuff in it. So, you know, it's it's quite a bit play. I mean, I reckon, you know, load that up with some spices and stuff and... That is actually... Yeah, That is actually mm. very nice. It's very subtle flavour. It's not bad. Mmm. I mean, any flavour in it's probably come from the marinade. Mmm. Mm, the batter itself the is quite plain. Is really... There we go. Give it a go, people. Carry it on. <laughs> right. Salute. <laughs> they say in Vikings, skull. Skull. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. Now, stay tuned because although that was super duper yummy, I am going to attempt another an actual mock KFC recipe, you know, not a ye olde 18th century one, but you know, actually get the herbs and spices and have a go at KFC. We'll see how I go. So, stay tuned and have fun out there. Bye.